goodness. You look so pretty today. Why, thank you, and so do you. You always look glorious and radiant yellow, in fact. Oh, stop it. You will make me blush. And you know if I go pink in the face, I won't be a daffodil. Well, that's a terrifying thought. Someone painted us as pretty daffodils in a famous pottery house, petal by petal, leaf by leaf, all by hand. You do realise we are the chosen daffodils. What an honour. But wait, why is it... Why would anyone paint daffodils on a vase? You know why. Why? Because we are pretty. Is that it? Yes, it is. Why else? But is it a vase for holding real flowers? If they are in it and we are on it, wouldn't that be too much of this pretty flower thing? No, silly. We are on it so that people don't need to put real flowers in it. Make sense? We are called ornament. Ornament. Yes, ornament. And wipe that disapproving look on your face away. But ornament doesn't make us sound important. Ornaments don't have function. Not even holding flowers. You want a function now? Listen, we don't have a function per se. That's the whole point. We don't do anything apart from sitting pretty on a mantelpiece or in a glass cabinet. Wherever we're wanted. Mind you, I have a friend, Rose, who is printed on a toaster. Such a hard-working girl she is. Heavens! Looking pretty while toasting bread. With all the heat. Yeah, I know. But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, we don't do anything, that's right. But the amazing thing is that people fall in love with us. Admire us unconditionally and get the urge to own us because... Because we are pretty. Exactly. Besides, those skilled craftsmen and women didn't create us to help people with their house chores, for sure. Oh, I do feel for Rose, though. Suppose it's not such a bad deal... We don't do anything, just look pretty, and whoever owns us doesn't need to do much for us either, apart from owning us and looking at us. Though regular dusting and polishing would be appreciated for our beauty maintenance. We don't need to be taken out for a walk for daily exercise or anything. <laughs> that would get some looks in the neighbourhood. A vase on a leash. Definitely no walk on a leash for us. Definitely no walk on a leash. In any case, we are too fragile for the wild world of outdoors. One wrong move and we'd be shattered to bits. Oh, don't. The thought of it. It sends shiver down my spine. Spine? I meant stalk. Do you realise people love the fact that we are fragile? More fragile we are, more precious we are to them. Fragile life of a beautiful ornament on a thin line. I think I'm going to weep. Now, now, stop being a drama queen. So, all ornaments are are for indoors, then? Well, not exactly. Some are carved out of stone in the shapes of angels and saints to live outside. I saw a photograph of them once in a guidebook of Italy somewhere left someone left in the shop. They were stuck on the outside walls of a church. Italy? I thought we were in England. Of course we are. Hello, it fell out of a customer's bag when she was fishing for a purse at the till. Cultural tour of Europe in five days. She must have been going there next. Sorry. Yeah. Carved out of stone? So it seemed. Naturally more robust than us. Then again, if you have the Mr. God on your side, you could be made out of anything and be fine, couldn't you? I see. That's why the gnome brothers and the naked lady in the fountain next door are okay. I guess. They don't have function either. Those stone ornament people on the church wall. Oh, are you still bothered by this function nonsense? Just curious. No, not really. Well, I suppose they have some meanings or reasons for some people. Meanings? Reasons? Oh, don't even go there. Our admirers love us without meanings or reasons. Because? Because we are pretty. You're getting the hang of this. That's right. Love at first sight. Unconditional love. How marvellous. Oh, I am going to weep. God. We don't need him. But I know not everyone likes us. Do you remember that gentleman who came in the shop not so long ago? He picked us up and put us down almost immediately. And remember, he said... I prefer something more modern. Oh, that old chestnut. Modern. And do I recall him saying things like minimalistic, too? Minimalistic modern taste. Ugh, that's like a fad crash diet for fat people, if you ask me. Yeah, he was a little overweight. I mean, being fed with so much rubbish taste in his wobbly belly, and now he decides to deny any taste at all. But why do you think he came into the shop, then? He's probably heard our ancestors who earned the antique title are worth lots of money. That's another funny world you and I are too young to understand. He didn't come to the shop because we are pretty. Not him. There are loads more like him. 
I bet he lives in a house with white walls, glass screens, stale stained steel surface contrast, and don't forget the polished concrete here and there for the oh-so-urban touch for his not-so-urban semi. You should be an interior designer. Any uneducated fool can do this modern for dummies cliché. But interior designer? Me? Sounds a bit fancy. Your point is, are we not modern? Of course we are. We wouldn't be here now otherwise. We are literally fresh out of the oven. My point is that some people are very narrow-minded. Oh, thank goodness for the others. Indeed. Oh, I do feel good after my little rant, though. I had never heard you speak like that before. I just can't stand those ignorant, arrogant, narrow-minded pseudo-modernists who can't or won't appreciate pretty things. White balls and concrete aren't pretty. I didn't say that. I am not an ignorant, arrogant, narrow-minded, frill-freak who can't or won't appreciate beauty other than in things flowery and yellows, oranges and pinks. Calm down. God, what's eating you? Oh, sorry. That time of the month. Well, let's change the subject. Okay. Did I tell you that I met this nice lady at the exhibition last week? Exhibition? When? Where was I? You never go anywhere without me. You were sleeping all the way through. What did you go and see that I missed? I love all those cultural hobnobbins. Why didn't you wake me up? Hey, I was too busy chatting to this nice lady. Anyway, I didn't go and see things. People came to see us. Oh? The exhibition was called something like Living Craft or something along that line in the town hall. We were one of the exhibits. Now you tell me. Why on earth was I sleeping on such an occasion? With all the potential worshippers? I guess you were too tired from all the chatting in the shop during the day. The exhibition started at eight o'clock in the evening. Ah, well, that's well past my bedtime. Beauty sleep is my mantra for excelling as an ornament from the others. So, the lady? Yes, her name is Connie. She sat next to us, also as an exhibit. I wasn't sure about her at first. She had this very serene and unapproachable look about her. A bit too plain, but quite intimidating. Not like us, you know. Sounds like that fat belly man's catch to me. But she introduced herself very politely and went on complimenting how beautiful we looked. The colours, the texture, all the details, you know. Maybe she was just saying it but didn't mean it. Like a lot of them. Oh, do stop being so negative. So, you didn't mean I looked so glorious in radiant yellow? Just saying, but not meant it. Of course I did. Daffodils don't lie. Anyway, I looked at her closer. She had this perfect circle bottom, going up in a perfect straight line to her pointy head. It sounds weird. And she had the smoothest, flawless, baby's bottom skin to die for. I asked her the secret. Tell me. She said she was this gloopy substance in a bucket once. Somebody made her that shape and made her that smooth all by hand. Takes a lot of experience and training, apparently. Sounds a bit like us, don't you think? Intriguing. Then suddenly, she started to look friendlier and more familiar. How? Well, do you remember my great cousin Lily? The beautiful one. I had this vision of Connie in a frilly silk dress, and she looked just like Lily in my head. Oh, I do love a bit of frills, I must admit. I said that to Connie, and she said that we must have lots in common. We should get together sometime for dinner. Never say no to a social gathering. Make sure I'm awake this time. She's going to bring some friends. She said there are some cute boys too. Oh, I look forward to that. You can bring your friend Rose. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. She's not like us. There are thousands of roses. Did I tell you that? She is one of clones. The dinner table won't be big enough. Besides, she won't be able to join our conversation. No offence to Rose, but she is a different class to us. Oh. Do you think Connie has interior designer friends too? Are you serious? I was just saying, you know. But not meant it. I didn't think you'd take it so literally. <sighs> Even a high-class ornament may need to have a career for the future. But you said ornaments don't do anything. Oh, you are such a hypocrite. Relax. Don't need to be on your high horse about it. I am just keeping my options open, that's all. We all need to be a little bit flexible to live in this modern world in any case. Bend in rules. Look, you can be a fashion designer with your frilly silk dresses. That's another fancy one. Really? Really. But I need to study first, don't I? Not necessarily. It depends on who you know. But No more buts. But... So when is this dinner then? Oh, I bet Connie is a vegetarian. <laughs>